Elon Musk has threatened to sue this year the Center for Countering Digital Hate, the Anti-Defamation League, and has now, today, is suing Media Matters. Media Matters published an article last Thursday about the growing hate that is on Twitter X. And what does Elon Musk do? He fucking sues. He knows that there's hate speech on there. But he doesn't care. He loves the free speech. So the growing outrage that is happening... He's now suing Media Matters, all nonprofit organizations. So the man that was bullied in high school is now the bullier. All right, guys. So we got to talk about Elon Musk and the attack on free speech in this country. OK, like I told you guys, there are a few public enemies, right, of the Democrat Party and the liberal media. Uh, Public enemy number one is Trump, okay? As you can see, they're throwing everything at the guy. They're trying to have him taken off the ballot. They're trying to throw him in jail. Uh, they're trying to financially bankrupt him. They are attacking him on all fronts because he is a threat to the establishment, okay? So Trump is public enemy number one. Now, public enemy number three is Joe Rogan. The reason why is because Joe Rogan is a threat to the establishment media, particularly when it comes to alternative sources of news outside of the mainstream liberal media he has a much larger audience than networks like cnn and msnbc and that really pisses off the establishment journalists because uh, joe rogan is not a journalist he's not a trained journalist but more people trust him with the news and his opinion and his commentary than some of the biggest names on cable news okay and again this is why they come out to Joe Rogan because he, again, he is a threat to the establishment narrative. Now, uh, public enemy number two is Elon Musk, who also is a threat to the establishment because he is one of the rare billionaires that is not woke and not super progressive. Okay, now I think that Elon Musk probably is a classical liberal, um, probably more of a libertarian type of person. He's not really conservative, but in today's politics, uh, being a classical liberal or a libertarian makes you far right. And Elon Musk also happens to believe in free speech, which also makes him far right. Okay. And that is one of the reasons why he bought Twitter slash X. And ever since Elon Musk bought Twitter slash X with $44 billion, the left has been trying to destroy the platform. Okay. They've been trying to take it down, even though the easiest way to take it down is simply to leave, right? But they don't want to leave X slash Twitter. They want to stay up there because they love it. And all they do is boohoo, whine, and cry about hate speech on Twitter, aka opinions that they disagree with, right? They disagree with them, so they call it hate speech. And instead of leaving and going to threads, which is dead, okay, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's um, Democrat um, alternative to X, Instead of just going there and being happy, no, no, no. they rather stay on X, boohoo, whine, and cry, and try to actively destroy the platform. And the way that they're trying to actively destroy the platform is similar to how they're trying to actively destroy President Trump through finances, right? Through money. And the way that they're trying to do that is that they're trying to uh, convince advertisers to not advertise on the platform so that the platform is financially un sustainable and that is the latest attack against elon musk we've seen this attack before in which liberal george soros back watchdog group uh media matters has come out with a hit piece accusing elon musk of allowing ads from big brands to be placed next to quote-unquote anti-semitic and hateful content now the way that they came up with this Media Matters, is that they actually manipulated the platform. They created a bunch of different fake profiles, okay? They followed very specific groups of people like fringe accounts, and then they constantly reloaded the page over and over and over and over and over again until uh, they got the result that they was looking for uh, and then came out with this hit piece saying that, well, Elon Musk is placing big advertisers' ads next to hateful content and now these advertisers have essentially stopped advertising on twitter okay again this is an attempt to bankrupt the company right this is what they're trying to do now elon musk is accusing uh media matters of fraudulent activity okay they manipulated the algorithm the platform 
to basically show uh, something that realistically doesn't happen on the platform because Elon Musk and Linda Yaccarino, who actually, you know, runs Twitter, she's the CEO, um, they've been very careful about how to try to thread the needle between free speech and also, uh, you know, having a platform that is friendly for advertisers, right? And that is the key to success of the platform in the long run if Elon Musk ever hopes to make his money back from buying this platform. Now, again, the left wants to ensure that that never happens. They want to teach Elon Musk a lesson for simply allowing opinions that they disagree with. And that is why they're on a crusade to destroy the platform. Now, Elon Musk, in response to uh, Media Matters, has actually filed what he calls a thermonuclear lawsuit against the company uh, because of this fraudulent attack. And this is the response from Media Matters. Take a look. I mean, I think that the, the thing to keep in mind is that, uh, uh, you know, it's not really clear what his cause of action is. And I think the most important thing is that in his response, in that legal threat, he mm -hmm. actually confirmed that our reporting was was accurate. I mean, every, he said that everything in our report, actually, as we said it existed, did actually exist on the platform. And, and that's basically our core argument, is that the platform is so saturated with extremism, with white genocide, with anti-Semitism, with racism, with conspiracy theories, things that otherwise should be managed in some way, that they can't actually protect the few brands that are still willing to remain on the platform. And this has actually been an ongoing thing for the last few months. This is just the latest and actually a string of these instances. So I think the most important thing, though, is that he confirmed that we were right. Were you surprised at all to see the reaction from some of these companies, right? Were you expecting all of these pretty big advertising companies to, to sort of follow on, follow through on what you said? So I think the thing that was significant is that it was his own it was his own conduct because that gave a lens for the advertisers to to sort of analyze what was actually taking place on the platform. So I wasn't surprised that one or two advertisers pulled their ads, maybe ones mm -hmm. that are smaller buyers. Um, that's been happening since August. Every, we've been putting out similar reports like this for the past few months, and and a couple of those advertisers pull their ads, and you know it's it's a, it's a day story. It's not it's not a huge big thing, but I think in this moment, because as you pointed out in your opening, he had just embraced he said he when he embraced that and promoted that anti-semitic trope that idea of white genocide um he said actual truth you've said the actual truth he was validating it and so if you're one of these big name advertisers you're looking at this string of problems on the platform and then you're looking at elon musk's own conduct you're saying there's simply no way for the platform to ever cure the issues that we're dealing with here because the rot um, goes all the way to the top. And the ultimate decision maker here simply isn't going to protect our brands from this content because he doesn't see a problem with it in the first place. Right, let's... Yeah, so you see now you heard that. Now, the irony of a left-wing organization like Media Matters, boohoo whining and crying about anti-Semitism is rich. It really is, especially considering how you have a left-wing uh, organizations, groups, and individuals that, you know, are currently vandalizing, destroying property in this country, attacking the DNC because of their anti-semitism now again this is not my definition of anti-semitism i'm using the left's definition of anti-semitism okay even the democrats have described some of their extremists as anti-semitic again this has resulted in real world violence where people have lost their lives because of these left-wing extremists but yet this guy is more focused on elon musk than the extremist individuals on the left that have actually committed acts of violence uh because of their uh, alleged anti-Semitism. Again, the left's definition, not mine's. Again, it's just amazing how that works, right? It seems like their priorities are out of line. But again, it never, but again, it's not about anti-Semitism. It's really about uh, silencing political opinions that they disagree with, aka silencing people uh, that they see as right-leaning or more conservative or that are not overtly woke or far-left progressive. That are a threat to the narrative. But anyways, uh, Linda Yaccarino, who, again, admittedly, has been a pretty good CEO for X, okay? She has not been nearly the authoritarian that people thought that she would be in regards to censoring free speech. Um, but, you know, she hasn't necessarily been perfect, but still, uh, she's standing on the side of free speech here. She's saying, if you know me, you know I'm committed to truth and fairness. Uh, here's the truth. Not a single authentic user on X saw IBM's Comcast or Oracle ads next to the content in Media Matters article. Only two users saw Apple's ad next to the content, at least one of which was Media Matters. Data wins over manipulation 
or allegations don't be manipulated stand with x so basically what she's saying is that look nobody actually saw this right they try to manipulate the platform nobody actually saw it and again this is fabricated right this is bs it's nonsense okay and you even had a journalist uh independent journalist by the name of michael schellenberger who tried to replicate this method that media matters allegedly used and he could not uh come up with any ads at all fraudulent was this boycott attempt by media matters hey jesse good to be with you i mean it sounds shocking it sounds like if you're on x formerly known as twitter that you are being served up neo-nazi content and that um it's all being tied together with these big brands well as you pointed out this is they created fake accounts to follow neo-nazis and then they say that they got those ads served. Well, we did the same thing as any journalist should have done as soon as they heard about this. We created fake accounts. We followed the exact same pro-Nazi accounts that Media Matters names. And we couldn't get any ads. We refreshed <laughs> constantly. We went into the actual content itself. We then went and followed th three times more pro-Nazi accounts. Same thing. We couldn't get any ads served up to us. So first of all, we were not able to replicate Media Matters. We asked Media Matters to respond, to explain how they gamed the system, to be shown the ads after having already followed uh, pro-Nazi content. We didn't hear back from them. I think that tells you that what's going on here, uh, there's more, to, the, more than meets the eye, I would say. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that. Now, in my opinion, I think this company is engaged in fraudulent behavior, okay? Because best case scenario, uh, they manipulated the platform uh, by following a bunch of neo-Nazi accounts, which nobody does, right? And they only follow those and those only. And they kept manipulating the algorithm, kept refreshing in order to get a result that they desire, even though that does not represent the actual experience of anybody on the platform, right? But then they use that in order to try to bankrupt the company and to get advertisers to pull out. Now, it also can be completely made up because as you just heard there, Michael Schellenberger says that, look, we tried to do this method and we couldn't find anything, right? This didn't happen when we tried to do it, which, you know, means that, hey, um, the whole thing could be made up. You can easily use Photoshop to come up with, you know, screenshots of these ads allegedly being placed next to neo-Nazi content. So with that being said, um, I think it is very clear and obvious what's going on here, guys. And I've talked about this before, uh, which is that you have these groups, okay, like the ADL and Media Matters, uh, which you'll claim they're fighting against hate speech, but what they actually are are just arms of the government, right? They're just arms of the government uh, used to censor opinions that they don't like by pressuring social media platforms to enforce censorship against dissenting political opinions by going to advertisers and saying, hey, look, uh, this platform has hate speech. This person is a bad individual. Therefore, you need to defund them, right? Pull your funding away. And that is how they enforce censorship. Okay, that's what's happening. Again, this is not just happening to X slash Twitter with Elon Musk, it's happened to Trump with True Social, it's happened on uh, Rumble, it's happened with other figures out there. We've seen these coordinated media attacks, okay, between the media, the government, these so-called liberal watchdog groups, and advertisers to take down uh, opinions that they disagree with, right, that don't go along with the far left woke agenda. Now, the question is, what do we do about this, okay? How to do we move forward uh, when it comes to this in the future. Well, one of the things that we have to do is that we have to start giving them a taste of their own medicine. And that brings me to this news right here, which is Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton launching a probe into media matters over Elon Musk fraud allegations. Yeah, so um, Attorney General Ken Paxton uh, has launched an investigation into media matters for potentially, you know, fraudulent activity right, in regards to their attempt to basically destroy X, and again, I'm not necessarily sure what will come of this, okay, in regards to this investigation, but I think that we have to move past Republicans just saying, hey, we're going to investigate something to actually bring in some lawsuits, right, do exactly what they're trying to do to Trump, okay, what they're trying to do with Trump is that they bring frivolous lawsuit after frivolous lawsuit against Trump, using taxpayer dollars, by the way, in order to bankrupt him, okay, so again, it's Trump's millions or billions. I'm not sure if he actually has billions in liquid assets, but it's Trump's money versus the 
billions and trillions of dollars that the government has, right? And so again, that's what Democrats do. They weaponize the government in order to bankrupt their political enemies. You have to do the same thing, okay? So again, the, the state, for example, Texas, you know, hey, I think it's great that you open up this investigation, but it has to move past just an investigation, okay? You need to actually do something. Take action, okay? Make it hard for these so-called watchdog groups to operate. If you got to bring more regulations against them, do it. Because we're not going to libertarian our way out of this, guys. It's just not going to happen, right? When you have your opponent weaponizing the government against you, and ideologically speaking, all of the major in institutions in this country are left-leaning, whether it be the media, the government, corporate America, academia, um, you're not going to be able to fight that by just saying, well, we're not going to use the same tactics you're using against us. We're just going to continue to, you know, uh, protest online and say, we disagree with this. And, you know, we hope that things will change because things are not going to change. It only continues to get worse. So what you have to do is do the same thing that they're doing to you. Again, this is why I say, you know, Republicans in Congress, you know, when it comes to January 6th, they... Yeah, you, you got to start kicking people out for pulling fire alarms like Jamal Bowman. Why? Because if you kick Jamal Bowman out, you show Democrats that, hey, you set this precedent. This is what you wanted, right? So therefore, we're going to give you a taste of your own medicine. Democrats will t think twice before they do it again, right? But when you don't do that, when you say, oh, we're going to let it slide, Democrats have no incentive to not do it again because they know there's no consequences. So when it comes to these watchdog groups like the ADL and Media Matters, you have to bankrupt them straight up. Do what they're trying to do to you. OK, if, uh, you know, uh, the Texas attorney general or some other Republican attorney general has to bring some frivolous lawsuit backed by taxpayer dollars in order to bankrupt Media Matters, who cares? Do it right. Especially, again, if there's something there. Right. If they actually committed fraudulent activity, you got to move forward with it and you got to try to sue them out of existence because that's what they're trying to do with Elon Musk. They're trying to bankrupt him out of existence. You got to do the same thing to them. You got to bankrupt them out of existence. OK, take away the financial incentive for them to continue to try to pressure advertisers uh, to take away funds from people that they disagree with politically, because that's what's happening here. Right. Until you start to really go after their money, nothing's going to change. And the way that the left is going after the right in regards to money is through weaponizing the government to bankrupt people that, again, they politically disagree with. You got to do the same thing. I'm sick and tired of Republicans talking about, oh, well, we're going to investigate and they give a strongly worded warning. I'm sick and tired of that, bro. I'm sick and tired of it. At some point, right, we have so many red states, so many Republican attorney generals, right? We can do something, right? Something can be done, okay? And until they start using the same tactics of the left, you're not going to see a change. You got to make these companies think twice before they do stuff like this. They don't care about manipulating the data. They don't care about, you know, potentially just engaging in fraudulent activity in the first, because there's no consequence. There's never any consequences. So until there's consequences, they're going to continue to do it. And again, this is so important because free speech on the internet is how you drive the narrative. Democrats win elections because of censorship. We know that the Hunter Biden story and the censorship of that story is part of the reason why Joe Biden won in 2020. And that's why Democrats try so hard. That's why they're so invested in censorship because it works. It works in regards to driving the narrative. So Republicans got to do the same thing. Because if they don't, again, like I told you guys, the Republican Party is destined to be a local party. They won't be able to win at the national level. You're not going to be able to win. So again, you know, it is in Republicans' best interest to actually step up and to actually do something rather than having these strongly worded response and warnings and doing nothing at all while you have your own constituents having their freedoms taken away from them. You have people being politically persecuted in this country.
parents being uh, targeted by the FBI. And we're sitting around talking about, oh, we can't do the same thing that they're doing. No, we have to do the same thing that they're doing. Otherwise, we will lose. Clearly, the authoritarian tactics that they're using are not hurting them because they continue to win, right? So clearly, it's not hurting them, okay? So at some point, you got to say, you know what? We got to do the same thing. We got to teach them a lesson. So again, I hope that uh, this investigation, uh, you know, turns out to be more than an investigation. I hope that other Republican lawmakers step up to do something about this. Because if they don't, again, the Republican Party is destined to be just a local party. They only can win local elections. And at a national level, they're done. I'm just saying. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.